Also, we have been talking <clears throat> about, obviously, the Royal Inquiry. We will talk soon to Professor Emeritus, Professor Des Gorman, um, Professor of Medicine at Auckland University on this. The inquiry was announced yesterday. There has been a fair bit of cynicism, as you are away, uh, about the scope of the inquiry, uh, about the timing of the inquiry, even about who will be actually on the inquiry, the three Royal Commissioners. Um, the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Lessons Learned from Aotearoa New Zealand's response to COVID-19 that should be applied in preparation for a future pandemic. The purpose of the inquiry is to strengthen Aotearoa New Zealand's preparedness for and response to any future pandemic by identifying those lessons learned from New Zealand's response to COVID-19 that should be applied in preparation for any future pandemic. Joining us to talk about this uh, and his reaction to it, and thank you very much for doing so, is Professor Des Gorman. Welcome to the show, Des. Oh, good afternoon, Michael. And thank you for talking to us. Des, you were one of the very first people um, of a significant clinical and uh, medical background to flag concern, I think is the best way of describing it, um, at mm -hmm. the reaction of health authorities um, to the very first tranche of, uh, of the COVID pandemic as it hit. You've seen, I guess, the uh, reference or the terms of reference for the inquiry. Does it meet your expressed concerns or views today? Unfortunately, Michael, it doesn't. Uh, a week or so ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, Murray Horn, about uh, what we thought in an inquiry would look like, and we guessed that it would have a moderately narrow terms of reference and would report back after next year's election, and that's proven to be the case. And I think if you look at that, plus you look at who the commissioners are, you can see that this inquiry will become lost in debates around public health issues, mask mandates and other uh, other things. Now, these aren't unimportant. I wouldn't say they don't matter. But what really is at issue here is the way in which our pandemic response was governed and managed. And I don't think those sorts of systemic issues are going to be addressed given the terms of reference and given the nature and background of the commissioners. Now, um, you've mentioned Murray Horn. I probably know that I think he's the ex-chief executive of Treasury. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Murray was um, secretary of the Treasury and then went on to the ANZ right. Bank. And he was also chairman of the National Health Board for a decade. Now, the really interesting thing is that if I was doing an inquiry, I would actually probably come to you two and get a high court judge and said, off you go. Um, but no, if... The question I would have of you is what's missing? So what do you think in specific should be in those terms of reference? Well, as you know, Michael, from our previous conversation, my real criticism of how this was managed was in fact the way in which the government took up a governance role and never successfully divorced its own political interests from how it was governed. And I had two criticisms there. One the members of government, the current government, are not equipped to undertake professional governance roles. And the other thing is, every three years they have to win a popularity contest, which makes it impossible to objectively consider public health risk and economic risk and to balance the two. So my first uh, problem with how we managed it really was from a governance point of view, and that led to management by fear, and that led, led to you know, adopting this we're the best in show and the envy of the world type of uh, perception, which then led to the facts being fitted to the narrative. The other issue that I had on, on a major level was how it was managed. We asked a ministry which is not well known or well regarded for its tactical abilities <laughs> to manage the most complicated tactical uh, event in our recent history. And not surprisingly, they got it wrong. And yet we have in this country outstanding logisticians and supply chain experts and a primary care network that knows its communities and they were simply not involved. So for me, the big deal issues here are how you govern and manage 
these sorts of pandemics. But I think, given that the committee will be headed up by a public health expert, and he's a very good public health expert, they won't get out of the weeds, and the weeds will be, was the mask mandate too early, too late, and so on and so forth. Look, those are all important issues, but as far as I'm concerned, that's a sideshow of the key issues. Um, the other one that they have, um, and I'd like to get your thoughts on, is um, they've, they say that they're not going to have any questions around vaccine efficacy. Does that surprise you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. I mean, given the controversy that the vaccine has generated, I'm pro vaccination. And so, I so am I. So I well. put up my hand on that one too, Des. But you, you, yeah. you, but you look, like but I. I would yeah, think, would it not? We, wouldn't we think that you would you, you just answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think given the anxiety it's caused uh, and the uh, distress it caused, I think that should be part uh, of the consideration in the same way that I think the uh, economic impact of the um, Reserve Bank's behaviour should be explored fully too. And I guess the other thing, while we're thinking laterally, Michael, the last time you and I spoke, I raised my concerns about how our behaviour as a society degenerated in the context of an existential risk of a respiratory virus. And I, there's nothing in this uh, review that will actually test uh, that social behaviour, which to me was the outstanding feature of the pandemic. But I suppose, will you, well, actually, before I go on, will you be making a submission yourself, Des? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I suspect there will be some uh, pressure placed on people like Murray and myself to write a submission. I think looking at the terms of reference and the timing, um, you'd have to wonder what the utility of a submission from someone like me would be. Um, so I think the answer, Michael, is yes, I'm probably have a duty to make a submission, but I, I, you know, I'd be very surprised if it was taken seriously. Okay, well, put that to one side and let's just hope that it is taken seriously. And I'd take it, and anything that came out of you and Murray, I'd take pretty damn seriously just because of your, not just your former status and your current status, but also because of your experience and your expertise and your, both your clinical and in the financial area and policy areas as well. Mm. But putting that to one side, I guess if you make a submission um, and the terms of references seem so limited, uh, is there an opportunity to say you needed to go outside scope in your submission? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, if I am to make a submission, it would be to identify <coughs> the things that aren't in scope and why they matter. Uh, I mentioned the governance and management issues. I've mentioned how disappointed I was at our behaviour and how we resorted to Lord of the Flies type uh, responses. Uh, these issues aren't in scope, yet they need to be because that's what actually matters uh, in terms of future pandemic responses, whether you decide masks should be introduced one week earlier or one week later, I would suggest is uh, almost irrelevant. Um, I see Professor Michael Baker has been quoted this morning, uh, the public health um, professor from Otago University, is saying that they really do need this inquiry because it will instruct them on future pandemics. And then he makes the point, he says, um, that it'll be the opportunity to learn citing the potential threat of bioterrorism, which I thought was mm. sort of heading straight to the zombie apocalypse really very quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, 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 I mean, the, you can understand, I can't you, if somebody says something like that, that the rest of us are going, holy moly, um, that is, do you think that public health experts like Michael Baker will have the primary ear of these particular Royal Commissioners? Oh, absolutely. If you look at the, um, the lead commissioner, who is a very good public health expert, you can imagine that this will be dominated by public health opinions in regards to future bioterrorism. That's just part of this, I think, drum beating to generate anxiety and alarm as a way of managing 
people's responses. Not, I, I'm not a fan of managing any community through fear because it's not sustainable and has significant adverse effects. Uh, but yes, I think um, this commission has been set up as a platform for the public health community to discuss in excruciating detail public health issues within the scope of the, of the inquiry. Mm. Mm. And as you say, the, the, the real issues here about whether or not the vaccine worked or didn't, um, whether or not the Reserve Bank uh, applied the right economic levers at the right or the wrong time, um, and the social effects um, of, oh, of well, the look, responses. Absolutely. You know, if we are to um, manage future pandemics competently, Michael, then we need to recognise we need to have a, a go-to professional governance body to oversee it in the same way that we have a mechanism for governance of the Reserve Bank, ACC and the Super Fund, where we sort of, these are complex entities which require professional governance. And in terms of management, we don't look to some of the ministries to do this. We say we need to have a stand-up organisation which calls upon all the expertise in New Zealand, whether it's employed by Freightways, Woolworths, Countdown or exists in the public sector. What we need to create... Uh, is the structure to deal with future pandemics. Clearly, there'll be specific characteristics of future pandemics in terms of the nature of the virus, in terms of uh, vaccines and, and so on. But ultimately, what we need to create now is the structure necessary to actually have a coordinated, nuanced and balanced approach which takes into account public health risk and economic risks and divorce is divorced from political risk. Mm. Um, okay, after you've made your submission, uh, the doesn't actually... Uh, and the other thing that was surprising me was, was the timing. So they will begin mm. hearing evidence on the 1st of February, so they'll set themselves up before that. It's $15 million worth um, of support going in behind them. They won't be required to deliver their report at the earliest, 26 June 2024... So what's that? Yeah. It's uh, 18 months away from now, longer than 18 months away from now. Um, <laughs> uh, we could have pr two or three pandemics by then, couldn't we? <laughs> yes, we could. Well, y you don't need to be particularly cynical to look at the date of um, reporting back to say, well, that's just been put outside the election, so there's nothing embarrassing mm. for the government yes, yes. prior to the election. Alternatively, you could say, well, by putting it beyond the election, you reduce the political uh, impact of the report and hence the, uh, uh, it may be a more apolitical document. But uh, really 18 months to look at what we can do better in the future. If it takes 18 months, you've got the wrong people. Yes. Uh, uh, this shouldn't take 18 months. I mean, I would have thought um, six months was every bit long enough. I mean... Uh, what are you going to spend 18 months doing? Well, uh, particularly so when you've, got all, you've excluded all the juicy stuff. Yeah, yeah precisely. Uh, but 18 months, that's what I said. I can see this getting down to excruciating mm. public health minutiae. And I can see this being uh, an ongoing gravy train for uh, those public health experts. And one thing I'd like to um, uh, suggest is that everyone giving submissions to this inquiry and giving a presentation to the inquiry, please, please declare your conflicts of interest. Uh, if you receive large sums of money from the government to do computer modelling, just say so. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't present and it doesn't mean your opinions are discounted, but you do need to declare your conflicts of interest because that enables the community to put your commentary into perspective. And I think throughout this We've had a large number of commentators who have not declared their conflicts of interest. But uh, the point you made at the beginning, yes, you can have goodness knows how many changes in viral threat between now and the middle of 2024.